there's just been a release of the new program Opera within Rune. Rune being a playback software if you haven't seen it before. This video is probably more intended for those that already know Rune and are using Rune. I'm not going to go into what Rune does, why you may or may not want to pay for its service. But this is all about the Opera functionality within it. I'm going to explain whether or not you should be using it and also how to use it too. So it's an impromptu setup, but let's dive in and see what Opera is all about and whether or not you should be using it. So we're here now in Rune and what I've got set up, I'm going to feed the sound out to the Chord M Scaler, over to the Chord Dave DAC and then into the Burson Voyager headphone amp. As you can see, I'm wearing the Aria Organics at the moment. You'll see why in just a second. If we go down to the icon here with the little speaker icon for volume control and similar things, you can open up what's called Muse with this kind of wiggly sound wave looking icon. And that's going to bring you into this interface. Now, I've already been playing around a bit, so let's get out of there. When you first land here, you're probably not going to see this headphone EQ system unless you've already been in there playing with it, but that's from clicking on how you see that is from clicking on headphone EQ down here. You may have it currently clicked on headroom management or crossfeed for instance. So if you ha if you can't see Opera, um, it should be down here under headphone EQ and if you can't see it, you can click add filter and it will pop up down here under add filter. So if we click on headphone EQ, that then takes us into this screen here, which is the Opera screen. And the way this works, where this has come from is that Oratory is a well-known figure in the audiophile and, and headphone in particular hobby. He's done a lot of work producing EQ curves for different headphones. And what basically is happening here now, which is exciting, is that all of these different EQ curves for different headphones are now built into Rune ready for you. So you can click on it and it will adjust the headphone based on what whoever created that curve thinks you should have. And this is where we start to get a little bit of a wrinkle. So I'm going to use the Aria Organics for now, but I'll show you some others as well. There are lots and lots of headphones in here already, but it is worth noting the reason I'm wearing the Aria Organics and not the Aria Unveiled, which I've just finished writing up my review for, is that the Aria Unveiled are not yet in here. So be aware of that. If you dive in looking for a brand new headphone like the Aria Unveiled, the HE1000 Unveiled, or the Poet, Meza Poet, a three that I've just tried, and none of them. I don't think the HE1000 was in here. As you can see, you can just type in here to get to it. And so there's no HE1000 Unveiled available here as yet. I'm sure it will get there. What is cool though, is that you can see that you can get some of the different variation pads in there. So Dakoni Fenestrated Sheepskin Ear Pads for the HE1000 SE are in there, which is cool. I'm gonna come back and go to the Aria Organic because I already know that's in here. And what you'll see is there's actually three different presets here. So you can see we've got Oratory's Harmon Target Curve. We've then also got the, the curve proposed by Kulo Kanurka. Who knows? Um, and then we've also got Kromka's suggested curve. And if you look at the curve that you can see on screen, you'll notice each one of them is a little bit different. And this is where the wrinkle comes up is there's still no one right curve. The oratory one here is, as he's named it, is to align these headphones with the Harman target. Whereas you'll see the other two have interpreted the sound a little bit in their own ways. It's interesting that both Kromkas and Kulo Kankuras have this little bit of a bump at around about the 200 Hertz mark and that's not as present in the one by Oratory. So there's obviously differences in how they've measured it, maybe what they've measured it on, and then also the decisions that they might have made in the case of the top two, the non harmon one, they might have made some decisions subjectively as to how it should sound. That step one is to work out whether or not you you want to use the Harman Target or one of the others, there is still a level of subjectivity here. It's not going to make it the perfect headphone all of a sudden. The other thing is it's not going to turn any headphone into being identical to another one because we still have to think about things like driver uh, performance, the way the driver moves, the way the ear pads are interacting with your head and the space that it creates around your ears. There's lots of different factors involved. So that's the Aria Organic. I've already had a listen before I started recording this. I really like what it does to the sound. But there's a caveat. I'm going to come back to that in a second to answer the question of whether or not you should be using this. Before I do, though, let's try another headphone as well. So with Aria Organics on, um, I like all three of these. I didn't really feel like I had a, a favorite. I would probably just go through all three if I was intending to use this and choose the one that I actually liked the most. After listening to a few tracks on each one, because you don't want to choose it based on a single track because it might, one of these might suit a particular track really well, and then the next track not so much. For instance, if we look at the, which one had the bigger bass? So the, the Kulo Kanurka one has a bigger lift in the bass, uh, or more to the point, a bigger cut everywhere else. Whereas if we go to the other two, 
Actually, no, the, the Harman one is the same, but you can see that in the Kromka one, the base is actually reduced as well. So you might prefer having that extra bit of base in that sort of sub 64 hertz range, uh, or you might not. That's going to be the sort of thing that you need to think about and decide what you prefer the sound of. So I don't have a preference on the ARIA organic curves. I'd be happy with any of them. However, let's try a different headphone and see if that changes it. All right, trusty Meza 109 Pros are on now. And we're going to find that in the menu here. So let's go back to all manufacturers. We can just type in 109 and ta-da, there it is. So again, we've got four different options. We've got Marks um, from Super Review's got one. Oratory's got Harman Target. Oratory's got, I guess, a more subjective one if we have a look at the two. Yeah, there's just a slight subjective tweak there by the look of it. Uh, and then our friend Ukulo Kanurka, sorry if I'm destroying that every time, has got one as well. So I'm going to have a quick listen and see if any of them stand out to me as better, worse, what I think overall. Switching between the first two here brings a sense of, um, it shifts the vocal, it shifts the presentation of the vocal, the width of the vocal, the sense of focus of the vocal, and the tonality of the vocal. Very subtly, but it's really interesting. I don't know that I could say I've got a preference, but it's a very obvious shift, despite not being drastically different curves. So another difference here, if we go from oratory's um, curve to super review curve, the there's a lot more energy and therefore, not aggression, but, but energy and attack in the four to eight kilohertz range from the super review curve. And some are going to like that, some not so much. It makes the sound more energetic if you're listening to it, the super review curve, but it also makes the sound a little bit less. I kind of, I guess it kind of brings the, brings the vocals and anything in that range more forward and more present and at you, which then makes the rest of the sound, the backing instrumentals, et cetera, less available. And so as I jump between the two, the oratory curve, gives me more availability of all the background sounds. And that also helps to make the sound a bit more spacious and a bit more open sounding. So again, it's going to be very preferential here. All of these are actually fine. They're enjoyable, no issues at all. I still don't know that I would personally use them, but I do like what they're doing. And I'll explain why I wouldn't use them in just a moment. It's not to say you shouldn't use them. It's all personal choice, but there is a reason that I wouldn't use them. I do want to do one test before I make that, um, that call kind of concrete, let's say. Let me just make sure that what I'm going to test is actually here. It should be, surely. LCD fives. Awesome. I'll be back in a sec. Not exactly spoiler alert, but a teaser as I get these ready. I just grabbed the LCD fives because to me, they are probably the most transparent and revealing headphone I own. And that's including things like the HE, um, not the HE, the Heiferman Sasavara Unveiled. The reason I find the LCD fives to be so revealing is not just their insight tonally, but also their spaciousness. They're an incredibly quick and resolving driver, and I, I find them just an excellent um, reference point for that reason. So I'm going to give these a run on the same software here. Okay, do not fall for that trick, turning up the volume when you didn't realize the track's actually fading out. You turn it up thinking you need more volume, and then the next track kicks in. Comment down below if you've done that. All right, great recording this one. For those who want to know what it is, I'll just bring it up big for a second. Cool album, great blues, sort of country blues, and awesome recording. But let's get back to Muse. Hey, that's cool. I just noticed there's a little headphone icon down in the side to tell you when you're using the, the headphone setup. A couple of things to take from this. The the EQ curves are all great. They help to bring the bass back into the, the LCD fires, which I think is fantastic. They give it a, a more balanced overall tonality rather than that mid-range forward, slightly dry sound that they have. That's all good. The reasons that I wouldn't use this and the reasons that I would suggest that you consider whether you want to or whether you don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't use it. I'm saying consider whether you want to. The reasons for that, there's two. The first one is that unless you only have one set of headphones, do you want them to all sound the same? Ultimately, this is going to bring all of your headphones to sounding very, very similar not the same because of the reasons I said before, the drivers still perform a bit differently, the way the pads create the space around your ears and the interactions that have that has with the sound, that's going to change things too, but it's still going to be creating very similar sounds for all your headphones. So for me, going from the Poets to the Aria Organics to the LCD-5s to the 
Focal Utopias over there. Each of them's got its own flavor. It brings out to me a different set of sounds that I hear that I haven't noticed before or that I'd forgotten were there. Each of them has its own its own flavor is the best word for it. It's like going to an ice cream shop and only ever ordering the same flavor. I would get bored of that. Whether you do, whether you don't, that's entirely up to you. I'm not making anybody wrong for using this software. In fact, I think it's wonderful that it's here because choice is the best possible thing. Anything that gets you enjoying your music more is a good thing. That's the key takeaway from this. The other reason I wouldn't use this and the other reason, probably the more important reason to consider whether you want to use this, to me, as best I can hear, and this is somewhat fallible because it's very, very hard to test accurately, but... As far as I can tell, using the EQ system in Rune, whether it's the the presets or whether you're doing your own EQing, it causes shifts in the sound quality of the sound. So even if you were able to have one headphone that was measuring exactly one way with no EQ and then EQ another one to sound exactly the same, assuming that was possible, the one that hasn't had the EQ applied will tend to sound more transparent. You're going to get more sense of the fine details and the resolution. And I can hear some of you already thundering away on your keyboards telling me that that's not possible and I'm wrong. If you go and look at the uh, presentations that, that Rob Watts did around the time of the release of the Mojo 2, he explained in, in more mathematical terms than I can recall effectively and convey here, he conveyed there why EQ actually damages the signal in most situations, the way it tends to get done. You have to be very careful with EQ and how EQ is applied to not risk two things. One of them is is phase shifts within the sound. And so what that means is that frequencies will arrive at your ears very, very slightly differently compared to how they're meant to. What that does is throw off our brain's ability to properly piece together the sound in the same way that it would if everything was arriving how it was meant to. I never understood this in the past, but I used to regularly find that I'd EQ something to sound the way I liked. And then every time I turned off the EQ, I felt like something was returned that I'd been missing. And it took me, you know, 40 odd years and maybe not quite that long, but 30 something years until I heard Rob Watts talk about it. And I properly understood what had been going on. And that is that both the phase alignment of the individual frequencies is messed up by EQ. That's how EQ works. So how EQ works is if you say, I want more 500 hertz or less 500 hertz, what it's doing is mathematically taking 500 hertz frequencies and shifting the timing of them a little bit to create constructive interference, which creates more, or destructive interference, which creates less. A little bit like how noise cancelling headphones work. And so that phase shift is something that our ears pick up on. And so whilst you can get potentially better frequency balance and tonal balance out of EQ, what you're also doing is you're messing with the timing of the signal. And I've done a whole video talking about the the importance of timing in the signal and why messing that up takes away from some of the lifelikeness, the um, realism, the, the transparency, I guess you could call it, of the music playback. The other thing that's going on, and I don't know the, the behind the scenes of how Rune processes EQ. It might be doing some of this perfectly. The phasing, I don't believe it is. I've played around with limited, um, sorry, I've played around with, with regular phase filters and EQs on here and then running it through a program called Rephase to produce linear phase EQ, which deliberately makes sure that everything comes out in phase and playing around with that. If you set it up right, it is better than what I've been able to do in Rune. So I'm assuming that Rune doesn't handle the phasing in an ideal way. Then the other thing that I think is going on here is that I think there is a little bit of damage to the finest level kind of fine details of frequency. And that's why I wanted the LCD 5s to give me the best possible insight. What I notice when I turn on Opera is that it's reducing the very fine sense of texture and detail and clarity in the sound. And before anyone jumps into the comments and says, it's because it's changing the frequencies and therefore it's reducing the emphasis on certain frequencies. Yes, it is doing that. But if you focus on the entire frequency range, some areas are being boosted by these EQs and it's not returning greater details in those areas. If you listen to a high quality system with a high quality headphone 
and you try it with the EQ on and with the EQ off. And of course you need to adjust the volume in between because when the EQ's off, the sound is louder and that's going to make it sound more detailed. But if you get the volumes matched and you listen to it with and without the EQ on, putting aside tonal balance and your preferences for tonality, what I think you'll hear, what I feel like I'm hearing here is a tiny loss of the fine textural details in the sound. Now, I don't think the textural details are that important for enjoyment, but the fine textural details are a part of what makes the sound more lifelike. The more transparent the system is, the more you forget that the headphones are there and the more you get lost in the actual music. Whether or not you're hearing the details and noticing the details, it's about that sense of transparency and that sense of realism. And I feel like the EQ is still robbing a little bit of that realism from the sound. But again, whether or not that's a problem for you, you need to work out for yourself. And again, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use this. I just wanted to talk about what was going on here and give you all the information that I think you need to work out for yourself if you want to use this or not. It's there. It's free if you've already got Rune. It's easy to play with and turn on and off. So go nuts. Have a play. Come back here and let us all know what you heard. Did you hear the sense of fine detail transparency dropping away? Did you not worry about that because you prefer the tonality? Whatever your experiences are with this, it's okay and it's totally fine. I'm not here to make anybody wrong for using this system. I'll probably use it from time to time depending on what I'm doing. So great system. I love that it's included. It's even more value in the Rune ecosystem, which I think is fantastic. But I probably won't use it very much for the reasons I've explained. Some of you will no doubt love it. Others of you might feel like me. As I said, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. But I think it's really cool and I wanted to talk about it straight away just in case you weren't aware that it's actually here. As always, thank you to YouTube channel members. Thank you channel Patreon members. Thank you to those of you who leave super thanks on videos like this one. And until next time, happy listening, happy playing with opera. Be kind to each other and I'll see you here again soon on Passion for Sound.